Hey, thanks for coming back. This is the 10th in our series of messages called Fixer Upper. Uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines fixed up houses. Uh, we're talking about how to fix up our minds so that we can uh, develop Christian minds. Uh, minds that are marked by joy. Now, some of you may have been thinking during this series like, yeah, this series on joy, happiness, sure seems sermon light. I mean, why doesn't he get... Why don't you move on to something that matters, like holiness, or the second coming of Christ, or deeper teaching, um, you know, the attributes of God. Uh, why can't we just move off of this kind of inconsequential stuff? Well, it turns out, joy is a major theme in the Bible. Uh, the book of Psalms are, filled, the Psalms are filled with praise. I'll just read you a few. Psalm 108. My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the prophets. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. If you want to read along with me, these, these are all part of what's called the Hallel. Uh, Psalms of praise. So the next one is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. We find praise the Lord all through the Psalms. Praise the Lord, you His servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised. But now, both now and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So this whole idea of praise isn't really a side issue. We're supposed to praise God from morning till night. All the time we're up. And then uh, Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol Him, all you peoples. For great is His love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Then by the time you get into the New Testament... Jesus comes along and he picks up this theme. He wants us to live with joy. He says, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. He wants us to have full life, to enjoy the life he's given us, enjoy our relationship with him. And then in Psalm of, or, uh, John 15, uh, verse 11, he says, I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. So Jesus wants us uh, to experience joy. Uh, so, you know, if you're one of those that tend to thinking, you know, I think this series is pretty unimportant, I hope you'll reconsider that and, and tread cautiously when, you're, when we're talking about joy and happiness. Uh, we're looking at the book of Philippians. Paul talks about wrong ways to think that lead to unhappiness and right ways to think that lead uh, to joy. A uh, wrong way to think is to think circumstances dictate our happiness. Uh, the right way to think is to be God-centered. So if something bad happens to you, something's not good at work or at your home or in relationships, rather than just, you know, think, well, I guess i got to be unhappy, think, well, what's God maybe doing in this? Be God-centered in your thinking. Second wrong way to think is to think people destroy our happiness. Yeah, people can try, uh, but the truth is we determine whether or not we're happy, not people, and we shouldn't give them that kind of power over us. Paul was mistreated by all kinds of people, unfairly beaten and flogged many times, thrown in prison wrongly, many, many different occasions, but he doesn't seem to hold it against people. Uh, he, his solution is think of people as being more important uh, than yourself. Now, in chapter 3, which we're looking at today, uh, chapter 3, 1 to 11, uh, he talks about finding his joy in Christ. And I just want to read two verses uh, for you. This is, if you want to look with me, it's Philippians 3, verse 10. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection. So Paul is saying one of the things that enables him to have joy is that he knows the power of Christ's resurrection. That Christ is bigger than the Roman prison. Uh, Emperor Nero who's putting him on trial and uh, 
his power is so great. And then he says a very unusual line. Uh, I want to know Christ and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Uh, you say, how can that be? How can you find joy in suffering? Um, so I'd like you to turn to somebody in your group and just answer that question. Can we find joy in suffering? Is it possible? If so, how can you find joy in suffering? Just talk uh, for a couple minutes. Turns out suffering, in a lot of people say there can't be God because there, God wouldn't allow all the evil and suffering in the world. But it turns out that suffering is part, apparently, of God's plan. He doesn't want it. It was caused by Satan, caused by the fall of man. But suffering has been an impetus for many people coming to know Christ. Many people, when they're suffering, say, you know, what's life all about? And they turn. Uh, to Christ. And uh, so I encourage you in your life to look for what good, if you're suffering, if you're facing some tough time, look for what good God can bring out of that. All right, that's all I got on my mind today. And uh, so go through your journal, uh, have a discussion with your group, uh, pray for each other. I hope you have a great time. Thanks for joining me.